If you're working with an application that has a lot of content, you may want to create some kind of nested menuing system like this, where you have multiple root menu items displayed at the top, and each one can have a sidebar filled with some nested menu items, and also the nested menu items can have further nesting like this, and then you can add some breadcrumbs so the user can easily see where they are currently and how to get back to the root items. So this is the project we'll be creating in this episode. Let's get started. I'm going to be building this from scratch, so I'll start by creating a new Rails application. I'll call it CMS because it's more of a content management system, but you can apply this technique to other types of applications as well. And then I'll go into that directory. Now the question is, where do I start in building this application? Well, I like to use the user interface to drive the design of the app. And to do so, I look for hints of resources within it. A good indication is a list. And ask yourself, is this something you want to be stored in the database so you can easily manage it without having to change the code? And this list is such a thing I want to be able to manage this menu through an administration interface. So let's turn this into a resource. The next question is, what are the attributes for each of these items? Well, each one has a name, and in this case, some content. But you might want to add a URL attribute instead of some content if you want it to go to a more dynamic page if you don't have a CMS type app. We also have a tree structure here, so we'll need to keep track of that for each item. Now we could create this tree structure on our own, but I like to use a gem for this kind of thing. There are a lot of different gems available to choose from, and they all provide a very similar interface, but are quite different in how they're implemented and perform. I'm going to be using Ancestry here, which I covered in further detail in episode 262. If we take a look at the Ancestry README, we can see a long list of different methods that it provides, and this will help a lot in building our tree-based navigation, such as grabbing the root node and going up the tree to grab the ancestors, or going down the tree and grabbing all the descendants. So going into the gem file for this app, I'm going to add Ancestry into here, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. Now we can get started in building our application. I'm going to generate some scaffolding here just for the sake of time so we can get an interface up and running quickly. And uh, all this will be a page model with a name string column, a content, let's make that a text column, and an also an ancestry column that will be uh, used for handling the tree. And that'll be a string and let's index that column as well. And then I'll migrate the database. Now when I try out this application, I have my scaffolding set up where I can create a new page but I have this field here for setting an ancestry. Instead, I want a menu where I can select a parent record that this page should be a child of. So going to that form template, I'll change the uh, ancestry field here to be a parent ID instead. And uh, let's make this a collection select menu. And we want to be able to select from all the different pages. So let's order those by name here. And that's going to be an ID and name fields used in the uh, collection select menu. And also let's include the blank item so that way we can uh, select a root node. Next, going into the page model, we need to change the mass assignment for adder accessible here so that it allows a parent ID to be submitted through the form. And we can add has ancestry to this to add all the tree-based behavior, including the parent ID getter and setter methods, which we're using in the form. Now when I go to create a new page, I have this parent menu, which currently doesn't have anything in it, but let's create a new page called products. And now when I go to create a new page, I'm able to select that as the parent node. I'm going to create a lot more pages off camera so we have some data to work with. There we go. Now I have this whole list of pages with some nested within the others. And let's get started in building the navigation. When I visit an individual page, I want some links at the top, uh, allowing us to go to the different root pages. I'll do this at the top of the pages show template. I want a list here with the ID of menu. And then I want to loop through all the root pages, which I can access through Ancestry by calling page.roots. And for each of these, I want to display a list item. And let's add a link to that page's name. I'm just going to that page's show template. There we go. So when I reload this page, there's our list of root pages and each one visits that given page. However, it doesn't look very nice. Let's pretty this up. Some style sheets will help a lot. I'm just going to paste in some content into the pages SCSS file and reload the browser. Ah, much nicer. However, I would like the current tab to look active when it's on that page. So on this link going to the page, I'm going to add a class in here called active, but only if the current page matches the page and the list. So you might want to move this into a helper method to clean it up a little bit, but I'll leave it here for now. 
Uh, here's another tip though. You might want to do a check on page.root instead. So this way, if you're on a subpage, the uh, root page will be highlighted in the menu. Now I've already added some CSS styling for this, so now the tab looks highlighted in the menu for that page. Next, let's work on the sidebar of nested menu items. Now this is going to work like the main menu, but I want to, instead of displaying the root pages, to loop through all the pages children. We can do that with call to children that Ancestry gives us. And I'll just display a simple link, and I'll use link to unless current, so it doesn't even bother linking to it if it's the current page. And that's something that Rails provides. Now the tricky part is that I want to make this nested so that it also includes the children's children in another list. So if there are any children in this page, it should render out another list here containing the page's children, but only if that page's children are present. And to do this, we can make this recursive by moving it into a partial. So I could render that partial, let's call it submenu pages, and then pass the pages into it. And that means I can just toss this into a partial after I get rid of this ID up here. And let's call it submenu pages. And then I can render that partial here so that it passes in the pages as the current page's children. And actually I'm going to use the page's root children so that way the menu stays consistent no matter what subpage they happen to be on. And then I'll toss this in an ID of submenu. Now I need to make one more quick change in the submenu partial, and that is so it loops through the pages that are passed in. Now let's try this out. Reloading this page, I have my submenu displayed on the side and visiting each page will end up not linking to it because it's the current page and it displays it on the side. However, every time the sidebar is rendered out, it's going to do a check on the page's children. And it would be nice if we can avoid that second check for each of the items. It could get a little uh, bad performance if we have a lot of items. Now Ancestry provides a pretty cool method to help with this called a range, which will take an array of nodes and generate a set of nested hashes for the parent and children. To get this to work, I need to change this call right here where I'm looping through the children. Instead, I can call descendants on this, which will include all the subchildren as well in one giant array, which means that I can call a range on this to rearrange it into a hash, a set of nested hashes actually, so that way uh, we can uh, loop through those and grab the children without doing separate queries. This means we'll need to update our submenu partial because when we loop through this, it will now include our children which we can reference here, instead of doing another query on the page record. Now reloading this page, we have the same effect, but it should be better performance because it's doing fewer queries on the database, although you might want to do some benchmarking and profiling to see for yourself. All right, I'm happy with the sidebar, so the last piece of navigation I want to add are the breadcrumbs at the top. I'll start by making a div here with the ID of breadcrumbs, and then I want to loop through all the current page's ancestors, and I can just do that with a call to ancestors that uh, Ancestry provides us. And that will return an array of page records which represent all the parents and then the parents of the parents and so on. So let's add a link to that page and then I'll display a greater than sign here as well. Okay, now when we visit a submenu page, we get breadcrumbs at the top, very easily done just by looping through the ancestors. Well, we're pretty much done with the navigation part of this application. I do want to clean this uh, page up a little bit so that it's a little more finished. What I want is the name of the page to show up nice and big. So I'll make that an H1 tag. And the content, I'll use simple format so that we can add paragraphs and such in the text. And I don't want to display the ancestry field in there. And I do want a title to show up in the browser, so I'll use uh, content4 for, for that. And that way I can toss the page name into the layout file, which is going to be here. So let's check the content for that title, and if it does exist, then we'll yield to it. Otherwise, we'll display CMS. And reloading the page, there we go, looks so much nicer. Well, that's all I have for this topic of tree-based navigation. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can still apply this to any application, even if it's not a CMS-style app. Uh, you might rename the page model to menu item and give it a URL attribute to link to instead of always going to the page's controller. This way, the menu items can still be dynamically generated from the database, and you can build all of this quite easily. 
However, you might want to um, cache all of this as well. It caches pretty nicely because menu items don't change very often. See episode 90 for more information on fragment caching. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching.